Hello viewers, welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair channel and today I have this uh, 2005 Toyota Corolla and it's back for more oil leaks as I said previously in one of my previous videos in which I did the oil pan reseal I stated that there were more than one oil leak and so uh, it's back again to do some more uh, repairs. Today we are going to be replacing the oil dipstick tube and uh, previously off camera I washed all of the oil down and I was trying to figure out on where the oil was coming from and uh, I found out that that one of the leaks was coming from the dipstick tube so I'm going to show you on how to replace that today now uh, previously in my oil pan reseal video I, uh, I did note that there were some oil leaks coming down from the between the engine and the transmission and it's really <laughs> deceiving and a lot of people may misdiagnose that as a rear main seal leak. Now the rear main seal is located in between the engine and the transmission so you would either need to take the engine or the transmission apart in order to replace that seal. And so that seal is a very labor intensive job. So you really want to make sure that that's where the leak is coming from. Now realize that oil leaks, they start from on top and they work their way down to the bottom. So anyhow, uh, I'm, I'm going to get started on the job. So I'm, I'm going to show you uh, the process. So now we're going to remove the, the engine cover. Now the bolt here is missing. I'm going to remove the plastic clips in the back here. So we're going to take a screwdriver and, uh, and, and push down on the, the clips here for the wiring harness on each one. Just need to use a, a slotted or a flathead screwdriver just to get this uh, out of the way. I'm just gonna remove the bolt here, leave that in there. Just to get this out of the way a little bit. Now uh, I'm actually uh, going to remove the intake manifold so I can give you guys a uh, a better view uh, you probably don't need to uh, take off the manifold to do the dipstick tube you can uh, either reach in there or remove the alternator uh, to get in, to get there but I'm just gonna remove this so you guys can see on on what is uh, is going on now uh, there are a total of five bolts and two nuts here so uh, for intake manifolds the rule of thumb is uh, when you remove them you work your way f from the outside and you go you go uh, inwards and then uh, w when you install them you you start inwards and you work your way outwards so you start from the center and you work outwards and you, you 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 tighten the nuts and bolts evenly. So I'm gonna remove this now. I'm gonna start outwards and work my way inwards. Well, I 
I'll drop the, the socket in there. You can use a magnet. Right now I'm using a quarter inch uh, extension and socket within a, a, a adapter here. Um, I'm trying not to remove the, the throttle body. I, uh, I, I don't wanna touch it. I'm just gonna remove the intake and tilt it outward so that I can just do on, on, what, on what I, I need to do. This manifold has been taken out previously, not too long ago, as well as the throttle body. a magnet to catch all of the bolts One bolt is larger uh, than the other. Now we we have one that's uh, that's at the very bottom here. We have one that's uh, at the bottom here too. We need to use a, a shallow uh, socket. You can continue removing the rest of the, the, the nuts and the bolts. Remove the dipstick. What you can do is use a magnet f for these nuts so you don't uh, drop them. Whoops. And the bracket came off for this one. Put it here. Put it this way. It's been a while since I ha have done one of these. They're not too hard of a job. The other nut dropped down there somewhere, so so we are going to uh, to look for it later on.
you got to be careful. There's a, there's a intake hose in the back somewhere here at the bottom. And you want to remove this hose out of the way. There's another hose here on top. Usually you're supposed to remove these first, but I d decided to remove the nuts and bolts. It doesn't really matter. As long as you know that it's there and you don't uh, tug on the manifold or, or break anything. So you can remove the, uh, loosen up the clamp here. You can use a, a needle nose or, uh, or, or ho hose clamp uh, pliers. Move this out of the way. I'm gonna have to undo the uh, the air box tube and everything. Move this hose uh, from the valve cover. Use like a screwdriver to push on the hose a little bit. This out of the way. Undo the uh, the air box, the, the air duct for the air box. Get this out of the way. Now, uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to disconnect the, uh, the the connector for the throttle body. You just push down on the clip and uh, and pull it out. Get this out of the way. So get these hoses out of the way. The reason why I don't want to disconnect the throttle body is because I don't want to take out the the coolant lines and bleed the coolant again. So what we're going to do is just pull the manifold out of the way off of the uh, the studs. Just kind of tilt it out of the way. Just make sure that there's no like like wiring or anything. Just be careful with the coolant holes and stuff. Do not uh, 
pinch the hoses or, or, or anything. Get this plastic piece off. There you go. If uh, if you're not going to take the throttle body off, just make sure that this hose right here. Just make sure that um, that this hose is connected before you put the intake back on. Otherwise, you won't have any uh, any uh, any brakes. There won't be any vacuum for the brake pedal. So so be really careful. Uh, I learned this the hard way in my earlier years. Uh, I forgot this, and I had the vehicle in drive. And I I almost ran into the garage, but I used the parking brake to stop the car because the brake pedal was uh, very hard and stiff. So make sure you don't uh, <laughs> forget this. So now I have this all apart. I just wanted to show you guys and where it's leaking. Um, I do know that there is an oil leak here on top. There's a leak here that sits here, and there's one, there's like a, a small uh, a puddle in the back here. I don't know if you guys were be able to see that well on camera. So I, I didn't get the opportunity to see and where it's leaking from. Uh, it may be coming from somewhere in the vicinity of the timing cover and or head gasket area but i have not confirmed that yet but uh, i did attempt to see if i could fix the leak uh, earlier when i replaced the uh, intake actuator they call it the oil control valve ocv for the intake and so I replaced that and sealed it up. And also this bolt, there is a filter. There is a filter inside for, for that bolt. So I removed that. I cleaned the filter and reinstalled it. But there's still some more oil leaks. But the main leak that I'm after is the, the dipstick tube here. If you look closely, it's really hard to tell, but you can see there's oil coming from here, from the, the tube. And uh, a while ago, I noticed there's some uh, coolant leaking here, the pink stuff. So I may be doing a, a couple of repairs uh, while uh, I'm here. Now, uh, and what I do know is that these leaks have been here f for many years. And so this is not what's causing the oil to dribble down all the way to the oil pan area. Oil filter housing is here. Oil pan is down here. And you see the red stuff here. So, um... It wasn't as severe as it was last time. So I'm just trying to fix some oil leaks and see on what happens and, uh, and recheck it uh, in a few days. So you can see the, the dipstick tube area is all, all wet. You can see it's nice and, and shiny here. So uh, I could see that the, the thermostat housing is leaking in the back here. 
uh, I probably have to remove the alternator to to get to it. Just trying to give you guys a better view on camera. You can see the pink stuff behind. When I squeeze onto the hose, you can see that it's uh, it's leaking. When I squeeze onto the hose, I can see the coolant uh, uh, dribbling down. So we're going to replace the, uh, the, th the thermostat housing. Uh, I may do that in a, a different uh, video. If you guys are wondering where the knock sensor is, it's right here. I, uh, I replaced it maybe like f f five years ago or so. Uh, I was getting a P0327 trouble code, and so uh, I diagnosed it, and uh, it, it was a bad uh, knock uh, sensor. So if you guys are wondering on where it is, it's, it's right here. It's bolted uh, onto the block. So what we are going to have to do is, uh, is disconnect the knock <laughs> sensor. Uh, a connector disconnect the connector and uh, remove it out of the way you probably have to get these connectors out uh, uh, as uh, as well Either you can uh, slide it out or remove the clip to get it out. Move this out of the way. Get it out of the way. Probably best to uh, <laughs> disconnect this. Just connect the uh, connector. There's also a piece of plastic that's holding against the tube. So we need to remove that out of the way. Just like a clip holder or something just to get it out of the way this piece here so now we have this pushed onto the side and out of the way we're gonna remove this I also have the battery disconnected for safety reasons because I don't want to short anything out as I'm working here and uh, maybe later uh, I probably have to remove the alternator because uh, I need to replace the thermostat housing because that's leaking. So for the dipstick tube, there's the 10 millimeter bolt. We need to remove that. Being really careful. So now uh, that's out, all you need to do is, is wiggle the tube and, uh, and pull it out, if it comes out that easy. So pull out the tube. You just need to wiggle it. 
back and forth. Some oil may come out. And here it is. So here's the old one. The seal is, is worn out. I'm not going to reuse this. I'm going to install a brand new one. Now, uh, initially, I'm supposed to clean the area down first because then uh, you're going to get dirt inside the oil pan area. So, just wiping down the area a tad bit. Then I'm going to uh, install the new tube and put some uh, RTV silicone on it. I just use a plastic pick just to clean the outer surfaces just to see if there's anything there that's all I just wanted to see if there's anything there just try to clean it out and we're gonna install the new tube so uh, here's the new one and here's the old one here's the seal we're gonna lubricate that with engine oil this is the old seal we're going to put some RTV just on top, just before the seal. Now, uh, I tried to see if I could get the original Toyota one, but they didn't have it available because it was on back order. So I wasn't able uh, to get it. So I just got the aftermarket ones by uh, SKP. This is the, the part number in case you need to see it. SK nine one seven four seven two. So now uh, we lubricated it, the bottom o ring, put some silicone here. I know it looks a little sloppy, but I tried my best to get some silicone around there and then oil on the seal. The silicone will not go inside, it's just gonna be around the uh, the, the the tube area install the tube in the correct uh, <laughs> orientation You need to wiggle it in until it snaps in place. Install the bolt. Tighten the bolt down.
if you want, you can apply some extra silicone around the tube area. This uh, silicone, uh, you probably need to wait up to 24 hours. But some silicone, you can return the vehicle to service uh, immediately. Uh, like the uh, if you use the right stuff gasket, th that one you can return to service immediately. But uh, I like using the uh, the red RTV uh, silicone. I'm just gonna put a little bit more of silicone just around the area. I just want to give it a better seal. It's it's a mess a mess I'm making it look like a messy job right now. But uh, it's it's not going to hurt anything. It's uh, outside the block now. It's not going to be a, 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 a big deal. So now, uh, later on, I'm going to reconnect the, the harnesses after, but I just want to finish the rest of my uh, uh, repairs while I'm here before I close everything up. So now uh, I'm just going to reinstall back the, the harness. There's the clip here that goes onto the uh, dipstick tube. I'm going to reconnect everything. Reconnect everything back. Make sure it clicks as you put it in. Because if it doesn't click, then typically it's not in all the way. And hook up the knock sensor harness. Make sure everything is uh, connected properly before we put everything all back uh, together. So now uh, we're just going to clean the area here on the intake. We're going to probably use the throttle body cleaner and just clean the surfaces. We're going to re replace the intake uh, manifold gasket. Uh, I already put all the wiring harnesses and the connectors all back now. I just need to clean the area and we just need to put everything uh, all back together. And while the intake is off, you can also clean the valves a little bit. Spray some uh, th throttle body cleaner to get rid of all the carbon and stuff. We have a sharp towel and just just wipe the surfaces here.
Yeah, the dowel from the intake, it came off. So I'm just leaving it here on the stud. I don't know if you call this a dowel or, or, or like a bushing or something. So now I'm just going to remove the intake manifold gasket. We're going to clean it and replace it with a, a brand new one. We're going to use brake cleaner here instead of throttle body cleaner because uh, it evaporates and dries up uh, quickly. If you want to... Uh, if you wanted to, you guys could also take off the throttle body if you want. It'll make it a little easier. You can take this on the bench and clean it there. Whatever you guys uh, want to do. I don't want to take too many things apart. Just wanted to get the job done. I already had this intake off not too long ago. So I've already cleaned the intake system on this multiple times. There's only a little bit of, of carbon buildup. There's, there's not too much. Clean the ports here. The individual ports and we're gonna clean the insides here where the gasket goes afterwards this is uh this is also a common problem on these model year corollas and matrix and vibe with the uh p0 171 trouble code uh with the original intake manifold gasket that was uh, on these vehicles from Toyota. And replacing that gasket will typically f f fix that issue if it's the gasket that's causing the problem. So now we we'll spray some throttle body cleaner on, on a new rag. I mean, uh, brake cleaner. Usually what I like to do is uh, use the rag and run it through here to clean the, uh, the surfaces. It's probably best to use a, uh, a shop towel or, or a rag of some sort. You can use a flathead screwdriver and clean the area here with the rag. Do the same. One of the bushing came out, as I said earlier, for this one here, but or the sleeve. It's not that that much of a big deal. I'll just install it in the right spot, and you won't have any issues. You can also use an air blower to get rid of all the dirt. You don't have to, but. That's what I used to do, but n but now it's not so much of a, a big deal just to get all the dirt out.
I'm using a new gasket from uh, <laughs> Felpro. I'll be using that. The same one, I think, that, that came off of this one. This is not from the Toyota dealership. This is an aftermarket part. This is... Uh, this I'm using a, a Felpro part. So we're going to install the new gasket. Make sure it's seated in properly. I'm gonna make sure that the surfaces here and on the block is clean before you reinstall in this. You just want to be sure and make sure that the gasket does not uh, roll over as you uh, try to uh, install the manifold. So now make sure that everything is in properly. Uh, make sure that this hose in the back is in all the way. Make sure that that hose in the back is in all the way. This is uh, one of the vacuum hoses for the brake booster. If you don't have this in, you, will, you won't have any brakes. So make sure you have this installed before you put everything all back together. So now I'm going to put everything all back. Make sure that you are in, when you're installing this, you don't roll uh, anything over. It's kind of stuck on, on the on the dowels here, here on the sleeves. Make sure everything is lined up before you start to put the, anything in. The two nuts. There was a nut that I dropped earlier. I, I found it on the floor. And that was for uh, for one of the intake manifold bolts and the nuts. Install the nuts first. Actually, you know what? Uh, I think I don't. I think there's a bracket that may be missing. This one over here. Install the nuts first. This is in the upright uh, position. Mm-hmm. 
install these and one long on the top one short at the bottom there's a bracket here Install the rest of the bolts. Three bolts. They're all the same size. And don't forget the one that's at the very bottom here. Don't tighten any of them up yet until you get all the bolts in. And after I'm just going to to run them through slightly just to get them in snug Just uh, run all the bolts through <laughs> one by one. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a total of seven bolts here. Two bolts and two nuts and five bolts. After we're done torquing everything down, we're going to put all the vacuum hoses and the connectors back. So the torque spec for this is uh, 22 foot pounds. You have to work your way, start uh, f from the center and work outwards. Just going to, to to run them through a tiny bit before I start to actually do the 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 torque the torquing. So the whole purpose of doing this is to uniformly uh, tighten the bolts in several passes. 
so that it'll e- evenly tie up the intake manifold. So it's imperative to f- to follow the, the torque specifications and the procedures exactly. So now I'm just gonna go again, go and do my second pass before I do the final uh, 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 torquing. Start from the center again. Work outwards. In the bottom, that clicked. Do this one now. Actually, do this one. That click and this one and th- these two here. And then the bottom one. Now we're going to go through again the fourth time. Make sure everything is torqued to 22 uh, 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 foot pounds. The one in the corner is a little hard to get to here. Just gotta be careful with the one in the corner here, because it's beside the the uh, the vacuum pipe connection. You just want to make sure that you're careful that you don't break it. And then the bottom, last one. So reinstall the throttle body connector. You can clean the throttle body if you want to before you put everything all back together. Install the vacuum hoses.
I'm just going to clean the throttle body a little bit before I put the uh, the duct work back. Meanwhile, you can uh, reinstall the the dipstick. So we're just going to clean the throttle body a, a tiny bit. I've already done throttle body service on this multiple times. And uh, I just uh, installed the intake manifold just now. So now uh, I'm just going to clean the throttle body a, a tiny bit. So I'm using CRC throttle body cleaner. Spray some in here. You don't want to spray too much, but just <laughs> liberally around. And use like a rag or or a shop towel, and 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 clean the clean the clean the inside of the bore and the surfaces. You might not see too much because uh, I've already cleaned this <laughs> not too long ago. I'm just doing a, a quick wipe here. Now if you want uh, for really hard to reach areas and hard to clean areas, you can use an old toothbrush like this, spray it down and you can use a toothbrush. Just make sure that the bristles are soft so it won't damage anything. So use a toothbrush and just go inside and, and clean like this using the toothbrush. Clean all the corners. Try to clean as uh, as much as you can, and the best you can. You don't want to spray too much of the of the throttle body cleaner because it's uh, it, it's going to uh, to flood the engine. And uh, in worst case scenarios, you may have to disable the fuel the fuel system, and uh, and 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 try to crank it over to get all all the cleaner out so that it doesn't uh, 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 flood the engine up now on some vehicles it, you may need to do a relearn procedure either with the scan tool or following the procedure that's available on service information uh, but on some vehicles like this one uh, there's no need to do uh, a relearn for the, the throttle body. Just driving it normally will relearn the throttle position by itself. So now once you get the, the throttle body connector and everything, uh, you can reinstall the, the ductwork back. Meanwhile, uh, as you're installing all these hoses back, you probably want to inspect the condition of the hoses. Make sure there's no cracks or anything before you in install everything back.
Make sure that the arrow is lined up into the slot here. There's a, a cutout slot, so make sure that that is lined up. Every vehicle will be different. So we install the vacuum hoses. If you're having a hard time trying to get these hoses in, you can try to spray some silicone. So you can spray some silicone in here, make it easier to install the hose. If it doesn't go in, this hose is very uh, <laughs> brittle now. It's probably a good idea to replace it. Now this hose is extremely brittle, it's not going in, and I actually had a hard time trying to get it out. It's, it's hard like a rock. And I'll put some dielectric grease and see if I'm able to, to slide it in for the time being, but that will need to be <laughs> replaced. going in now so if you have a hard time trying to get it in you could use dielectric grease or uh, or silicone spray or silicone grease Want to uh, tighten up the uh, the duct work now? <clears throat> so 
So now you want to install the nuts or the nut for the bracket. Uh, and we install the plastic for the harness back into the, the brackets here. That's onto the, the manifold. So uh, when you start this vehicle, it's gonna be flooded a little bit with throttle body cleaner. So it might take a while to start. You might have to rub the engine a little bit. In order to keep it running. I'll double check for oil leaks <laughs> in a few days and see on how it looks. See if I fix the, the main source of, of the problem and, uh, and we'll go from there. <laughs> That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, <laughs> please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you next time. Have a good day and take care.